The Dukes of Hazard turned out to be a surprising hit for CBS, boasting 147 episodes over seven thrilling seasons from January 1979 to February 1985. Created by Guy Waldron and former moonshiner Jerry Rushing, this iconic show followed the wild adventures of Bo and Luke Duke in the fictional Hazard County, Georgia. Known for their daring escapes in the General Lee and their constant run-ins with the scheming Boss Hogg, the Duke brothers captured viewers' imaginations. And who could forget Daisy Duke, with her famous short shorts adding to the show's charm? Join us on Facts Buddy as we delve into some of the lesser-known secrets of the Dukes of Hazard. In this video, we'll reveal a wardrobe malfunction involving Daisy Duke's iconic attire that almost led to a very unexpected outcome. Plus, find out how her denim shorts became a cultural phenomenon and ended up in one of the world's most renowned museums. John Schneider John Schneider wasn't a real redneck, but he sure nailed the role on TV. At just 18, he was eager to make it big in showbiz and came across auditions for a new show about two cousins always getting into trouble and pulling off wild car stunts. Who wouldn't want that gig? Despite being a New Yorker, Schneider went all out to land the part. He showed up in faded jeans and a cowboy hat, put on his best Southern accent, and even brought a six-pack of beer to the audition. He also fibbed a bit, claiming he was 24 and a professional stunt driver. Spoiler, neither was true. The producers bought it, though, and the rest is history. Bo and Luke Duke, the iconic on-screen cousins, first met in a rather unconventional place, the bathroom. Tom Wopat, who plays Luke, was at the studio for a screen test and had not yet met John Schneider, who plays Bo. The two struck up a conversation through the stalls after Wopat noticed Schneider had a guitar with him. Why Schneider had a guitar in the bathroom stall remains a mystery. However, they hit it off right away. After finishing their business and leaving the bathroom, they soon found themselves working together on set. Dolly Parton Originally, the producers wanted Daisy Duke to be a Dolly Parton look-alike, complete with glitzy outfits, big blonde hair, and a dream of becoming a country singer. They envisioned her in sparkly turtlenecks, flashy go-go boots, and an over-the-top wig. However, Catherine Bach had a different vision. She decided to dive into her own closet for Daisy's look. She opted for iconic short shorts, a snug t-shirt, and cowboy boots. This became her signature style, defining her character for generations. Instead of a Dolly Parton replica, Daisy Duke turned into a unique character, brimming with the folksy charm and lively personality that only Catherine Bach could bring to life. The show wasn't expected to make it. It seemed like a long shot when CBS decided to pick it up, especially since it was only meant to fill the gap left by the failed Captain America series. Even William Paley, the network's chairman, didn't hold back his dislike, calling it lousy. But the joke was on him. The show skyrocketed in popularity, reaching 46 million viewers per episode at its peak and lasting for seven seasons. Plus, it spawned a ton of merchandise, spin-offs, movies, and even video games. The Dukes of Hazard was a true story. The popular series stemmed from the 1975 movie Moon Runners, inspired by the real-life moonshining Rushing Brothers, Jerry and Johnny. They transported their illegal booze using a customized 1958 Chrysler 300D, named after General Robert E. Lee's horse, Traveler. To evade the cops, their car had a nifty gadget that released an oil slick. Sounds like a wild ride, right? The most popular character wasn't even human. The 1969 Dodge Charger, famously called the General Lee, became an iconic vehicle despite its controversial Confederate flag and name after a Confederate general. In 2015, Warner Brothers banned the production of toys and merchandise featuring the Confederate flag, including the General Lee. Despite the controversy, the car received over 35,000 fan letters a month, outshining all other cast members, even Daisy. They put the General Lee through a beating. 
Whenever you saw that iconic orange streak flying through the sky, zooming over rivers, ravines, and even a moving train, it was the real deal. They didn't use fancy CGI like today. Luckily, no actors were hurt during filming, but the General Lee sure took a beating. They supposedly went through over 150 Dodge Chargers during the show. This wasn't an issue at first, but by the mid-80s, Chargers became harder to find. The production itself strained the supply, and the model had been out of production for over a decade, making it even rarer. To cope, the crew would stop drivers with Chargers and try to buy their cars on the spot. Even then, by the final season, they had to resort to using remote control miniatures for many of the stunts. Daisy Duke's Wardrobe Malfunction Before you get too excited, let's clear something up. There could have been more wardrobe malfunctions with the Southern Belle if not for the show's producers. Catherine originally wanted to wear even shorter shorts, but the network would have definitely censored that. So, they set some rules. If she wanted to keep her signature look, she had to wear skin-toned pantyhose under her shorts to prevent mishaps. Luckily, the denim shorts she became famous for ended up being named after her. Having a piece of clothing named after you is definitely a way to leave a legacy. The Other Duke Boys In 1981, during the fifth season of the show, the studio raked in over $190 million from merchandising. Schneider and Wopat, having only received $25,000 each in royalties, felt shortchanged and sued Warner Brothers in 1982. The studio refused to pay up, prompting the Duke boys to threaten to quit unless they got fair compensation. Rather than give in, CBS replaced them with Coy and Vance Duke, played by Byron Cherry and Christopher Mayer, for season six. This move backfired as fans were outraged and ratings plummeted. CBS had no choice but to negotiate with Schneider and Wopat, meeting their demands to keep the show profitable. Legacy the popularity of the show owed much to Daisy's eye-catching outfits, which were more than just a fashion statement. They gained recognition as an essential part of American culture when the Smithsonian Institution showcased them alongside iconic props like Indiana Jones's gear and Dorothy's ruby slippers. These shorts became cherished symbols, earning their place as national treasures. Exploring the hidden stories behind the Dukes of Hazard has certainly been a fascinating journey into pop culture history. Now, we'd love to hear from you. Who do you think was the bigger star of the show? Daisy Dukes in her skimpy shorts or General Lee 